Hey y'all, welcome back to the Keisha Tower Show. Um, it is 4th of July weekend, and I did not have all 10 episodes recorded like I was supposed to. Um, the podcast comes out on July 3rd, today's July 1st. I'm about to get interrupted by a kid. Maybe not, I hear them screaming though. Um, so I'm sure it's a matter of time. Uh, today, what I want to talk about today, um, today I want to talk about body image and I know that I've talked about that before and I kind of want to expand upon it a little bit. So I've done an episode before that, um, sorry, I'm trying to get my microphone right. I think it's jacked up. There we go. Um, I've done an episode before about it. I had a good friend of mine, Sabrina Orthies, on. Um, it was on when it was the Kentucky Mama podcast. And I want to just go into it more because um, I think I can have a profound influence um, on people due to the fact that I have a CrossFit gym. So, I am very body neutral. So for me, it's, you know, it's been, um, body neutral is recognize the things that your body can do for you, right? So, um, you know, these big muscular arms of mine, they can uh, help pick my kids up. My big legs, big muscular legs can help me walk and run. Um, I prefer not to run unless someone's chasing me, but you know. Um, it's less about what you actually look like. Um, so like, you know, I'm sure you've heard of like the body positivity movement and that's more about just like appreciating your body and how it looks and body neutrality is like be appreciative of like what your body can do for you. And it's not to say neither, neither are good or bad. It's just, it's just where I'm at. What? Okay. I'm doing a podcast. Again? Yes. Mommy. Shh, I'm trying to do one by myself. Mommy. What? You have chocolate all over you. Because that was one of the balls. Okay. Go have one piece of candy and leave me alone. When I'm done, we're going to the store. You can have a piece of candy too. Please quietly shut the door behind you and don't come back in here. Love you. Bye. Wait, shut the door. Thank you. Quietly shut the door. Please do not slam it. Don't come back in here, okay? Okay. Fine. Um, so yeah, neither are good or bad. It just is what it is. And um, it took me a long, 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 long time to get there. Um, I have uh, struggled with my body image, the way my body looks. My whole entire existence of my life. Um, I will, just trying to think back as, so it's one, sorry. It's one of the reasons I'm so passionate in the gym, just like allowing people to feel how they want to feel. Like I don't, in the gym, I don't push weight loss. I, I will never push weight loss and I just don't think that's fair. And if you are a gym that, that surrounds yourself with weight loss, like, I think that's okay too. Like, I, again, it's not good or bad. It just is what it is. Um, do we help people with nutrition? Sure, because it's just, if that is something you are passionate about, we are absolutely going to help you eat better. Um, if losing weight is a goal of yours, like, it's allowed to be a goal. It's just not something like, 
We don't do challenges, anything like that. I don't want to do that. Um, it's just not something that I connect with at all. So, thinking back to like really early moments, like one of the earliest times I became aware of what my body looked like. Um, someone told me I had hairy legs and I was for real like eight years old and I didn't even know what that meant, but the way they said it, it made me feel like it was a very bad thing to have hairy legs. Um, and I remember like my mom was like, I mean, they're blonde hairs, whatever, you know? Um, but I just remember the feeling of it being like, okay, hair on your legs is not meant for girls, uh, which is wrong. I mean, which is like that statement is wrong because you are absolutely allowed to have hairy legs. Um, and I just remember like that being one of the first times I became like hyper aware of my body. Um, after that, I kind of hit puberty pretty quickly. Um, I started developing pretty early. Um, I've always been somewhat bigger chested. So it was always like a good thing. Um, people made me feel like having a bigger chest was a good thing. Um, I remember in middle school is when I really started to become really down on myself on what my body looked like. Um, and again, I've talked about it before a little bit, but I just remember I was always bigger all the way around. Like I was just like broader and bigger and I wasn't fat at all. Um, and I just like, I was like a size eight in middle school and I remember my friends were like fucking zeros and twos and fours and there's nothing wrong with that but it just becomes a comparison game at that point and eight is obviously bigger than a zero a two or a four so I began to be like okay what can I what can I do about this how can I like make myself skinnier and um I didn't know what to do, so I ate, uh, which is the opposite of making yourself skinnier, but I am an emotional eater, a stress eater, and a binge eater, all wrapped up into one. Um, obviously, in middle school, I was, like, not, uh, so I, I, I cheered for a long time, and I feel like that kept me in pretty, like, good shape, and when I stopped cheering, um everything kind of started to pack on a little bit. And even backing up before that, talking about cheering. So I also remember like, I remember one time I felt good in my body. Um, I was in like a bathing suit and it was when like I was at the peak of my cheering, like we were super competitive, we were tumbling, I was the base. So I was the one throwing the girls up and stuff like that. And um, Someone was like, damn, she's like, like, she's cut. She looks, she looks, you know, she's strong. And I remember like flexing. And I was like, damn, like, and I remember like feeling really good about being strong. Like that was one of the first times I like felt good. And I, that was in seventh grade. And not long after that, uh, so I always had huge aspirations to be a UK cheerleader. Always had huge aspirations. Um, I cheered for many, many, many years, and again, it was, like, not the typical, like, rah, rah, go team, go. It was, like, it was competitive shit. Like, we were really competitive, and, like, we practiced a lot. Um, our coach was great. I just, I, I, I loved her so much, but, I mean, like, she put us through it, like, in a good way, and I just remember, like, um, 
UK cheerleading team had won like back to back to back to back national championships and I was just like that's what I want to be a part of like that's what I want to be and again in middle school um a teacher of mine you know she asked about our goals or aspirations dreams and this teacher straight up in front of the whole class looked at me in the face and was like you are way too big to be a Kentucky cheerleader like you will never be a Kentucky cheerleader and the year after that, I quit. I quit cheering. Um, and again, that was kind of full circle back to the beginning of the story. Like after I stopped cheering and being active, and then I was comparing myself to my friends is when the emotional eating kind of started to kick in. And not long after that, I also started to pick up the drugs and alcohol um, at a pretty early age. Um, and then, you know, we just, we just get so many, like, mixed messages as, as kids. Um, because then I also remember, I know it was uh, about middle school, I was at a pool party. And I'm pretty sure I told this story already, but I was at a pool party at my grandparents' house and there was an older man there. I, th there's no way I was over 13. Like, there's no way. And he just kept telling me over and over and over, like, how good I looked and, like, was I don't, making very not appropriate comments towards me. I don't remember the exact thing, but I remember, I just remember, like, the way he looked at me and... I knew it wasn't right, but I also felt very good. So, like, put all those stories together, right? I mean, starting all the way with, like, the hairy legs. Hairy legs are bad. Again, they're not. That's just the message I received. Uh, hairy legs were bad. Um, big boobs are great. Um, you look strong as fuck. Your body looks good in, like, a sexual way. Um, you're bigger than your friends. You'll never be good enough to be a UK cheerleader. All of these messages came in that really de developmental time from 6th, 7th, 8th grade, pretty much. And that really solidified the way I viewed myself. For many, 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 many years to come. Many years. Um, you know, after middle school, into high school. Um, you know, in, in, in high school, it's, it's when I, my freshman year is when I started dating Scott. And he didn't give, <laughs> he didn't give a fuck what I looked like. Um. But I started, you know, I started soccer and stuff like that. And I was, I was, I was so below average that it hurts. Like, I just think I want, I was looking to like be a part of something. But like after every soccer game, we would go eat fast food and you know, where were we going to go? And it was just like, I was eating fast food all the time. And I remember even in high school, I knew that, like, I wanted to start working out and stuff. Like, I just knew it was something that I, like, wanted to do. But I was doing it with the intention to be skinny. Um, and I think we all, it's unfortunate, but I, think, but I think we all go through that at some point. And, I, like, it set me up for failure. Every single time it set me up for failure. And, I just... <laughs> I remember I went on a kick in high school after soccer was over. I bought a treadmill because I had a job. So I bought a treadmill with my own money. And I would do literally 30 minutes of interval running every day. Like one minute on of like super fucking high fast running and then one minute off. Like, just, and I remember I did that forever. And then afterwards, like I would go eat pizza rolls <laughs> or something like that. Like I just really remember not having like basic knowledge surrounding 
what a healthy lifestyle looked like. Um, I thought if I ate less, so consumed less calories, again, I'm sure we've all been there. Like I remember when, um, after I graduated high school and I was working in an office environment, I would take like this little bitty tiny thing of like SpaghettiOs and it was like 250 calories or ravioli or something. And I remember being praised. Like I remember people being like, oh my God, that's all you eat for lunch? Like that's so awesome. I can't believe it. And then I'm just like, what the fuck? Like what are these messages that we are, I mean, and again, it's, it's people with their own trauma and do shit and stuff too, right? I mean, no one is, people are projecting their own thoughts and, and things onto me during this time. But the wrong messages kept getting fed to me, like for such a long time. And, you know, I did the gym thing, the, you know, the 24 hour fitness gym thing for a really long time. And it was all, this is what would happen. And uh, for most people, I think it's pretty typical is you hit it hard beginning of the year and then you fall off. Uh, maybe two, three months down the road. Like there was one time I had uh, some good success and I was working, I was working out with somebody that I worked with and he like really held me accountable, um, did some programming and stuff for me. So that felt like a win. Um, but again, uh, for me personally, just with that underlying message of you need to do this to be skinny, you need to eat less to be skinny, you need to work out to be skinny. For me, it never worked. Like, ever, ever, ever worked. Um, fast forward to fucking getting pregnant and having babies with an already fucked up relationship with, with yourself and, and food and working out. So you talk about a real mind fuck. Like, that's it for sure. Uh, I'll never forget, like... Walking into my first appointment with Raylan. So I had a miscarriage uh, of twins prior to Raylan. And I went in for this pregnancy. They'd take your weight. I remember I was 166 pounds. And I haven't seen 166 pounds since that day. And I was a very unhealthy 166 pounds. Like I had no, no muscle at all. I was not eating well. Like, I mean, there, there was just, there was nothing healthy about that. But we hear that number and we think, oh, that's the number I have to get back to. That's the number that I have to get back to after I have this baby. Because then what? Then you win? What the fuck do you win? Like, you don't win shit. Um, so I really hate that. And I don't, and, and I believe... During pregnancy, there are good reasons to measure weight, um, to make sure you, you are gaining appropriately, the baby's gaining appropriately. It can help monitor some medical conditions. Like, absolutely, there are good reasons. Um, it's just hard. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. I just think that it's hard. Because then, after you have the baby, like, even though you instantly lose weight because you push out five to nine pounds, uh, you know, plus or minus a couple, with fluid and placenta and all that crap, it's, then you, you, you got a, the majority of people um, just have this very bad view of themselves after they have a baby. And I was for sure one of them. And I was breastfeeding and you got to eat when you breastfeed. Obviously you got to eat when you're pregnant, but you got to eat even more when you breastfeed because the baby's going to take from you first. And, um, I was with Raylan. I was not eating enough because I was trying to lose the weight. So I started like producing less milk and, so I would like drink more water and try all of these things like eat oatmeal, but make sure that it was just enough to like get what I needed. And I just look back and it's so frustrating because I put, I put myself through so much unnecessary hell to get back to what? 
the 166, then, like, what was going to happen? Like, what the fuck was going to happen then? Um, I wasn't going to, like, win a trophy or be like, oh, here we are. I achieved it. I achieved the pre-pregnancy weight. Like, I lost all my baby weight. Like, who gives a fuck? Who actually gives a fuck? Um, the problem is we get so hung up on that fucking number that we are afraid to take a look within ourselves and actually see if we're happy with ourselves. Because, um, I just, I knew this already, but I just, hearing it out loud. So I just recently went to a, um, a mastermind in Denver, Colorado for CrossFit related stuff. And in not so many words, there was a really fantastic speaker there. And he basically put it like this, like, if you look in the mirror right now and you feel good as fuck, you look good as fuck, like you are just fucking feeling yourself. You've been doing all the right things, whatever. And then you get on the scale and it's maybe five pounds more than what you wanted it to be. You instantly feel like shit. So 30 seconds prior to that, you felt fucking fantastic. And then what? You got on the scale and the scale didn't read what you wanted it to say. So then you start self-sabotaging. Maybe you start binge eating. Maybe you're like, okay, I need to hit two-a-day workouts. You know, all the, all, you know, very irrational shit can probably start going through your mind at that point. And I think that is a good indicator of identity versus reality. Right? So... In those 30 seconds, your body image didn't really change, but your self-worth changed, right? So fuck the scales. Like, I literally hate scales so much. And I just, I wanna fucking, I wanna break them all. <laughs> like, it's, I wish that as a society, we could get to the point where we look within ourselves and we're like, do we feel good? Fine. Fuck it. Fuck everything else. Like, and again, it takes, it takes a lot, a lot of time to get there for sure. Um, you know, even so when I was six months postpartum with Raylan, that's when I found CrossFit. And... Even at that point, even though I still had a fucked up body image of myself, or, you know, I, I, I felt really, I felt gross about myself. Um, I knew that I needed to start CrossFit for mental health benefits, not for physical benefits. The physical benefits were going to be the side effect for me. I needed it for, it's, it's legitimately the reason I started. Um, I, I was... I was having very suicidal thoughts at that time. I was, I was just not in a good place at all. And CrossFit like really brought out the best in me. And the first place I was at for six months, it was fine. It was just kind of out of the way, but it was just like that introduction to CrossFit and then I found a new place that I stayed at for a really long time. And even at this place, it was, I, I allowed myself to have a very toxic image of what I should look like. Um, I would literally go in there and weigh myself every single day. I, even doing CrossFit, and it just blows my mind now, like, just, like, looking back, I was on the fucking keto diet, which keto is just, like, super high fat, super low carbs, basically all it is is you're in a calorie deficit, but the fats keep you, when, the, the higher fat diet, it keeps you fuller longer so that you want less, essentially. I don't know how the fuck I even did CrossFit during that time. Um... That was the closest that I had ever been to that magic number of 166. 
that I was like reaching for. And even so, this was after I had my second child. And I was still reaching for that 166. I mean, this was like 20, this was 2018. And I was still reaching for that. And that blows my mind so hardcore. Like, it's crazy to me. Um, I remember I got down to like 172, 173, and it wasn't enough. I was like, okay, how can I keep, how can I keep doing this? So I would lower my, my calorie intake just a little bit more, just a little bit more. I mean, at one point I was eating like 1600 calories a day. I fucking eat 1600 calories for breakfast these days. I mean, not really, but sometimes it feels like that. Um, so even within this, cro within a CrossFit community, like no one necessarily pushed this on me, but it was something that I felt like I needed to get down to the number that I wanted. What? Hurry up. I love you. Give me a kiss and go on. I'm almost done. I love you. Whenever I'm done with this, we're gonna go to the grocery. Are you gonna wear that to the grocery? Okay. Easily shut the door. Tell the girls I'll be ready in about 15 minutes. So, um, I mean, yeah, I like, I don't know that anybody's in the wrong, right? It was just one of those things where I was just like, I had wished that I had some better guidance. But that's the guidance I was given, was it was just like, okay, this is the diet you need to do. You want to lose weight? This is it. Um, and then I left that gym to go to another gym. And I went specifically for this coach because I really wanted to work underneath her because I felt like she was what I needed in the moment. And she was. Like, she was one of the first people that made me feel like Another kid's about to come in. Told you. Yeah, what is the one with? You have to put a shirt on. Mommy, what the hell? Because. No, you're not staying in here. Let me finish this. You can. Care. You can wear that. Go. But why did you have to? Okay, you don't. Please exit the bedroom. Anyway. Don't slam the door. I just want to see that. Like 15. Leave me alone for 15 minutes. 15. God, I'm not going to get through this. Um, she was the first person that made me feel like um, eating and losing weight could be easy. And no one had ever made me feel like that until I went to her. And that was really life-changing, to be honest. Um... We worked together for about a year and a half, and we basically split for the purpose of, I started doing my own per programming because I was going to open the gym. So we split kind of at like the end of COVID, and then a couple months later, I opened the gym. Um, but she really gave me a solid foundation of, hey, like... You want to lose weight? Like we can, we, like we can do that. Um, it's super simple, but you can't do this keto shit. And I have tried. I have done every fucking diet under the under the sun: paleo, keto, Mediterranean, flat belly, like literally Atkins, all the motherfucking things. Right? The best that I have ever felt. Um, I. It was right before I opened the gym, I started working with a weightlifting and nutrition coach. And he, on top of what the lady did for me, he really fucking dialed it in for me. And he just, he, he expanded upon what she had done and made it easy for me. And... I don't think that there is enough easy 
in this world, essentially. Um, what? If I get high, can I take my own? Yes, don't come back in here. Don't come back in here. Yes, can don't come back in here. Yes. When we get to the store. Yes. Good God. Um, the best I have ever felt was high protein, high carbs. And I felt good. I felt good in my skin. I looked good. Um, to me, I looked good. And now, the body weight that is preferable for me is about 180, 185. And that is a, it's not a far cry from 166, but, um, that is mainly because of the stuff that I want to do, of the weight that I want to lift. Like, I want to be this weight, I feel good at this weight, and I can lift the things that I want to lift at this weight. Um... And as I say that, I have a coach at the gym who weighs like 40 to 50 pounds less than me and can lift more than me. And I'm, I just look at her in awe all the time. But she follows high protein, high carb. I mean, she gets the nutrition that she needs. Um, and it's so great to finally get to a point of appreciating my body because it was about 32, 33 good years of like fucking hating the way that I looked for many, many, many years. Um, and I hated looking at myself in the mirror and this doesn't just go away with working out in nutrition. This has a lot to do with self-love and self-worth and how does that get changed around? I mean, therapy, <laughs> like, I mean, you can do some, some deep dives on yourself from, um, you know, reading or journaling or podcast, like listening to podcasts, stuff like that. But like, if you don't love yourself, you're not going to love your body or the way that it looks. And if you don't trust yourself, like, you're never going to trust yourself to do the right thing for your body. Um, almost got interrupted again. They've been fighting for the last, I don't even know how long. Um, so, yeah, you, you have to... You don't, I mean, you're just never going to get to, like, there, there's never going to be a magic number. You're never going to get to a number. Like, I remember I used to write down, especially postpartum stuff, like, before I was, you know, with, with, with Raylan, with Briar, even with Jolie. Um, and that was as, you know, earliest, you know, four, three, four years ago. I was like, if I get down to this number, I'll feel good. Guess what? I got to that number, and it wasn't like I magically felt better about myself. It wasn't like, okay, this is what I need. This is like, now I can fit into like all this. Because I couldn't. I couldn't fit into the size I wanted. Therefore, I felt like a failure. And therefore, like I felt like I needed to do more or eat less. And just to like put it into perspective too. I mean, you got to fucking eat. You have to eat. Even if you're not working out, you have to eat. And if you do all this yo-yo dieting shit where it's like, I don't fucking eat one day, and then I eat the next day, and then I eat a lot, and then I eat a lot for like three days, and then I don't eat, like, that does nothing positive for your body, for your metabolism, for anything like that. Whenever I was breastfeeding, I was eating 3,000 calories a day, and I was tracking it. Because I was wanting to make sure that I ate enough. And then I was working out. So I wanted to make sure that I was eating enough to support that as well. I was not working out hard. But I was working out. I was lifting a barbell. I was lifting weights. I was doing cardio, calisthenics, all that. Um, 
but then right now today I'm like uh, I'm, I'm maintaining I'm not in a calorie deficit I'm anywhere between 2,000 2,200 calories 200 grams of carbs 150 160 protein the rest fat and that is where I feel good that is where I like to be just because that's where I'm at Briar! I swear to God. I swear to fucking God. <laughs> Give her the shirt, Briar. Don't come back in here. Don't. Her not give me the shirt. Okay, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Let me finish. I locked the door, but I'm sure that it's not going to help. So, thank you for your patience. In this last fucking, I don't know, 10 minutes of this, I can't get through it. Um, so, yeah, just, just, you have to eat. And I think we just, we lived in this fucked up world of... Oh, my God, these kids. I just think we lived in this fucked up world of, like, don't eat, lose weight, look good, but you don't. And that's how people end up fucking with all kinds of eating disorders. Bulimia and anorexia, anorexia stuff like that. Um, but I think it just takes, it just takes time. Uh, I think that's the whole point of this is, you know, I had such a fucked up body image and self view of myself for so long. And it wasn't just like a, a, a light switched on. And was like, oh, you now have permission to, like, feel good about yourself. Took a lot of fucking work and a lot of deep dives. Um, again, therapy was so beneficial because once I started to love myself, I was able to, like, appreciate where I was in the process. And... Once I was able to, like, get away from those unhealthy, like, eating mechanisms and just eat to, like, fuel my performance and eat to feel good and know that, know that there was, like, a purpose for the food. And again, that doesn't mean that, like, I absolutely eat sweets and shit. I mean, I am a... If you ever want to make me happy, I love sour candy. Um, they have lots of carbs, too. <laughs> but, um, I, and hella fucking, I love chocolate. Like, I eat that shit. You know, the, the thing is, right? You don't, you don't eat fucking two candy bars, right? You eat one. <laughs> or instead of eating all the squares, you eat a couple squares. Like, and, I'm, and again, that's, if you find yourself, like, binge eating, or not able to control yourself around food, like I just encourage you to seek out some help. There are so many professionals out there that can help you and it is a deeper rooted issue for sure. It is definitely deeper rooted. Like, um, again, I've talked about this before previously, like on the Kentucky Mama stuff, but, um, you know, my mom and I grew up, uh, like, really poor, right? So, a lot of my food issues come from, there were times where, like, we didn't have a lot of food. I think my mom told me one time that, and again, this was, I mean, you know, you gotta take inflation and shit into effect, but my mom would spend, like, $50 a month on groceries for her and I, like, I can fucking spend $50 in two seconds at, at Walmart now, like, on food. Um, and, and I'm very grateful that I'm, like, I'm, I'm privileged that I'm in a place where I can do that. And I just think about that. And, like, there were just moments where we didn't have a lot of food. So, I know that that's where the root cause of some of my stuff was. And it's not, it's not my mom's fault, right? I mean, she did what she could with what she had, given the circumstances. But... I know that's where a lot of my issues come from because it's like there were moments, not that we didn't have food. It was just like 
there was very, very, very little food. And it wasn't, like, great food. Like, I remember arguing because we had, like, all we had was cheese and bread one time. Or all we had was cereal. Like, there were so many nights that we had, like, cereal for breakfast. I mean, for dinner. Just because we didn't, like, really have anything else. And some, being in that, like, lack mindset with food, it's like, okay, when you have food, when you have, like, a whole plate of food in front of you, you fucking, you, you shove it down and you binge eat it or you binge eat shit. So that's, I mean, I know that's where a lot of my like food issues have come from just because we were scarce for like so long. So, and then it's a lot of it was tied up to the emotional. There's so much emotion in food, right? I don't think a lot of people take that into account. Um, because I even find myself now, and I know this is about body image and we're, it all is still there, but I find myself now, like, not drinking, right? But I'm still looking for that level of, like, serotonin hit, and I will just, like, look for food to fill that void sometimes, and I'm very aware of that, I'm very aware. So as I become aware that I'm, like, looking for that, like, hit to like feel the void that I'm missing in that moment I try to make myself like take a step back that doesn't mean I deprive myself of it and we are like okay let's think about the real reason that you are wanting this food right now right let's think about this let's process it and it's always at night it's always at night after my fucking kids go to bed and you're like all right you can have all the fucking food you want and none of it be take like none of it can be taken from you um and i find myself you know just sitting in the recliner right now scrolling on my phone no tv on and then just like my hand in a bag of chips or something like that and it's still hard it is still hard like right now at 35 years old it is still hard to kind of control that piece of it, even though I'm aware of it and even even though I can, like, rationalize the reasoning behind it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I still struggle. Like, it's not, it's not perfect, right? And it's just like, okay, you're replacing drinking with eating sometimes, and that's difficult, but I'm also just like, okay, well, you're not drinking or smoking crack, so this can be a win for a minute, <laughs> Like, um, but I just, again, I just, I try to be aware of it because I can, I can always tell. And now that food plays such a vital role in my health in general, physical health, mental health, like if I were to like binge eat now, I feel like shit. I feel like absolute dog shit. And like, I'll wake up. And my body is just like sluggish I'm sluggish and that's just kind of like all and again all searching for that serotonin hit to like make you feel those feel-good emotions in the moment and that's so frustrating like for sure um, again I know I got a little bit off track sorry but I feel like it was important to talk about so I don't know um, how do I feel right now at 35 years old, I feel more at home in my body than I have ever felt before. I listen. If you're watching YouTube, you'll see it. I got, I got the rolls still. I got rolls. I got a jiggly belly, okay? Um, I'm 1,000% okay with that. I have stretch marks all over my stomach, all over my thighs. My ass is fat. I got good looking muscles. My quads are fucking out of this world. Um, I don't know, like my chest, I feel like my chest is like, not my boobs, but like my actual like pecs, traps, shoulders, like it's always the stomach. And you know what? I don't give a mother fuck. I don't care. I literally don't care. Um, I am going to roll around. Again, it is July 1st. Two episodes in one day. I'm, I'm crushing life today. 
Um, I am gonna roll around for the rest of the summer with my butthole hanging out, my tits out, and my belly out. And I don't give a goddamn what anybody thinks about me. I literally do not care. Because I feel so at home in my body now. When I was able to take a step back, get my nutrition right in a way that supported my body, supported my performance, it also allowed CrossFit to do the appropriate thing to my body. Because CrossFit does everyone's body differently, right? It does every single person's body differently because every single person is on a different journey in CrossFit. It, CrossFit complemented physically my body in a way that I love. CrossFit is a total body workout. Um, I love being able to sweat my shit out. I love being able to sweat the stress out. I love being able to pick up heavy stuff and put it back down. I love being able to pull my body weight above a rig. Um, I love being able, it is a privilege to move my body each and every day and fuel it with the appropriate foods. And it took me fucking 35 years to get here. Um, and I'm gonna continue to take care of it because when I feel good physically, I feel good mentally, I feel good emotionally, and I am so happy because what did this body do for me, right? Um, this body supported me through six pregnancies, um, seven kids, three whom of which are earthside, and my body also fed those kids for three years, more than three years. Um, Dude, we're fucking... Women are fucking badass. Like, we are fucking badass that our bodies can do that. We can grow whole-ass humans and feed them for the first year of their life. Like, we are... We're, we're, we're fucking... We have superpowers, for sure. Um... So, yeah. I mean, I'm again, it's... It's taken a long time, but I'm happy. I am happy to be here, even with all the bullshit. <laughs> I am happy to be here to hopefully be able to continue to spread the word of body image that you don't need to change anything, truly. You don't need to change anything about yourself as you are right now. You are enough. And you are worthy. You are capable of all the things you think you can do. And you don't need anything else to prove that for yourself. If you want more, go get more. If you don't know where to get started, start with the smallest fucking simplest thing. You want to do CrossFit but you're not sure how to start? Maybe you want to walk? Fucking walk. Like, you don't have to do CrossFit. Like, I'm always going to preach CrossFit because I own a fucking CrossFit gym. But CrossFit is not the only way to make your body feel good. You can come and walk. You can do yoga. You can do Pilates. I mean, you can, there, there are so, you can run. Like, you, there's so much shit that you can do. And CrossFit is not for everyone. I, I personally think CrossFit is for everyone. Everyone doesn't think that, and that's okay. Um... But find what works for you to, like, make you feel good. And again, if you just are along the physical aspects of it, I don't think you're ever going to feel 100%. Like, you got to do some deep dives. If you got some bad relationships with food, fucking figure it out. Like, you don't know where to start, start fucking just think. You don't have to, you know, the easiest thing to do is put pen to paper. My, uh, brain dump, get your shit out. If that's not you, pop open your notes on your phone or just fucking think about it. Think about, like, do I have food issues? Where do they Where do they come from? I mean, chances are you'll probably have an, an epiphany of, 
of some sort. But outside of that, like, know, know that you can, like, you can get there. It is possible to get there. Um, and I think that I owe it to myself to do this. Not only for myself, but also for the three girls that I am raising. Because my mom didn't know better, right? 20 to 35 years ago, there are not the resources on this shit that there is now, right? I know better. So I am obligated to do better for my kids. And I will. I tell them all the time, like, they know I work out to feel good for my brain, not for my body. The, 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 the physical aspect is secondary to the mental. But I would like to think that I am setting them up for success because they go in that gym and they see moms work out and they see women work out and they think it's normal. My three girls will think it is normal to fucking deadlift 300 pounds, to fucking clean 200 pounds, to snatch 150 pounds. And you know what? They should. That doesn't mean they have to do that. I do not push CrossFit on any of them because I have three girls. Chances are one or two of them ain't going to like it. And that's fine. But to be able to open their eyes to that. Maybe they want to do a 24-hour gym. Like when they go to college or something one day. Maybe they don't want to pay for CrossFit. Maybe they want to do a 24-hour gym. Guess what? They're not going to be fucking scared to go to the free weight section and show these guys what the fuck's up. And I hope that they do that. I hope that they're one of these girls on fucking TikTok where the guys have the reactions like, Damn, she can do that. And they ain't going to be scared of that. They won't be scared of that because I'm trying to instill the confidence in them that we are strong, women are strong, moms are strong, they can do anything, we can do anything, and they are capable of everything. I owe it to them to be a better version of myself and to not make negative comments about myself or my body in front of them because that's how we break cycles. Even if we feel that, even if I feel like shit one day, I will never, ever, especially in front of them, say, I'm fat, I need to lose weight, I need to be this weight, I will never do that because then they will think oh well since mom thinks that it has to be true right because the kids it's, it's black and white there's no gray they, they, they don't have the capacity at this point to understand that so by myself doing better and being better they will be better and they will have the confidence to know that they are enough Period. And I hope like fuck that they do not have to deal with the body image issues that I had to deal with. And if I ever hear somebody at the pool trying to fucking say to them what was said to me, I will knock a motherfucker out in a minute. Like, I don't know. I just know I have to be better and do better for them. Period. And they deserve that. I deserve that. I deserve that for myself. I deserve the peace within myself. To feel at home in my body always. And they deserve a mom who is confident and sure of herself so that they can learn from that. And that's really the goal, right? So around the body image, it's not to be a certain weight, not to look a certain way, not to fit in a certain pant size. It is body neutrality love what your body can do for you love yourself 
and my kids will feed off that. Your kids, if you are a mom, will feed off that. And I, they will appreciate you so much. And I know that. All right. I think that's it. My kids have not interrupted anymore, so I think it's a good time to end before they do. So, okay. Thank you all. Bye.